Nigeria State is probably the greatest center of crime uh, and criminality in Nigeria, but see the relatively pervasive uh, peace now. Uh, of course, it's not the making of the commissioner of police, it's through him. Uh, the or orientation as preached by the uh, Inspector General seems to have percolated down the whole gamut of the police, and we hope and pray that uh, we continue along this track. Uh, you will agree with me that uh, the crime rate has gone down, uh, the civil society is now aware of its own uh, uh, primary role, and the police also have become less hostile uh, to the contributions uh, available from uh, the civil society. I think the change has been tremendous on it is coming level. Yeah, if I may take you on, on your um, uh, accolade on the Lagos State Commission of Police. You have your colleagues, if I am right, um, the Human Rights Group, um, the NLC, that called for his head recently over the crisis of uh, the petroleum hike. He was said to have not managed the situation very well. And if you, one of their, theirs, is saying this, do you want us to believe what you're saying? Uh, I think uh, it is believable. Uh, first, you cannot please all the people all the time. The Commissioner of Police Legal State is a human being, he's not a god. Uh, and he has a duty to do, uh, but we, uh, I personally think he is doing his duty with a human face. In some areas, he may have one or two criticisms, uh, criticisms to make, but Grant, please give him a break as a human being. Uh, it's true that we, we tend to criticize. Uh, there is a popular uh, saying in Yoruba, which I will try. If, if you want uh, five trousers, uh, you ask for ten. After negotiation, you may even end up having six. So we're not going to uh, say the police have done their best. They are the best thing, uh, human beings on earth. We still would the Oliver Twist give us more, give us more. Uh, that's our tendency, and uh, we we are idealists. And Nigeria is still very far from idealism, but we know that our police are not doing too badly now. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Olakwe, as a first public relations officer, you came in about the same time with uh, Mr. Tafta Balogun. And of course, you came up with this eight-point eight strategy. How successful has this been in the last one year? Well, I will not uh, want to assess because it will be self-adulation to say that um, the eight-point strategy has been uh, very effective and um, has yielded positive results. But I thank God that um, I'm witnessing um, a pro prominent son of this country, a social critic for that matter, saying the police is doing well. The Edwin program, which was introduced as a roadmap to police in Nigeria, was the brainchild of the Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogo, to give an assessment of policing Nigeria for the first time in the history of this country. It is a barometer to measure what, how effective we are performing. This time it's not uh, just policing blindly, but policing with um, some dictum or some dictates of what we are to achieve, where we are going, and how we are going about it. So we have policing now with empirical philosophy. What do you want to achieve? One, massive onslaught on uh, gruesome murder, um, um, people, assassins, and then um, other violent criminals, we have done very well. Um, you will recall that uh, prominent Nigerians who were killed uh, sometime last year before elections, we want to recall the Haramasha saga, how we went into it within three months, we were able to get the authors of crime. Yeah, but if, if I may put it to you, Mr. Lakwe, now that we, we're here, people still believe that the Haramasha killers were not arrested, and they have this um, a school of thought says, the normal cliche attached to police that perhaps the police went after some hoodlums purporting these people to to be the actual killers of Harry Masha. What's your comment Don't about that? Don't forget that, as uh, Dr. Joe said, now, Nigerians are idealists. 
to be an idealist, you must um, have a, a very intelligent uh, community of persons who are erudite, who are seasoned, who have um, some modicum of intellect to assess situation. It is not easy to go out and bring human beings to say what they did not do in this uh, democratic dispensation. Well, military dispensation, well, you can say force of arms and so on. But in these times of uh, human rights activism, where people now know their rights and people are claiming their rights as a duty of government to ensure that their rights are protected, uh, it's not possible to do that kind of thing now. We can't still manage human beings to come up to say they are claiming authorship of murder when you know that it's a capital punishment. We went into it, we collected information from people, intelligence from people, then we now went into uh, serious brainstorming whereby we were able to get the hideout of these criminals through the assistance of fellow Nigerians. So I want to say this moment that Nigerians are really now cooperating more than ever before with the police. So we got cooperation from the public and we were able to feed them out and we paraded them and they made confessional statement to very capital offenses of murder and armed robbery. So I want to reassure Nigerians that that is the truth and they should support us as we fight in the crusade of making Nigeria a safer heaven for industrialization. Thank you very much. Doctor, do you agree with him? Do you think the eight police strategy of uh, Tafa Balogun is a success in your own view? Uh, well, if, the, uh, if there has been a change for the better in the system, then his uh, effort has been a success. Uh, it, it stands to reason that his effort uh, has succeeded. Okay. Uh, you founded Udwa People's Congress, yes. and uh, of course, Udwa People's Congress seem to be doing the same thing that the police force is meant to do constitutionally. What informed that? No, uh, the OPC is not doing what the police is supposed to do. The police have the constitutional right to maintain and sustain law and order, but it is the vocation, it, it's, their, it's their profession but it is the vocation of every good citizen to sustain and keep law and order. So if the police find that uh, their effort is not yielding their desired effect, why can't the civil society assist the police? So we're not doing, we, we are not constitutionally uh, empowered to sustain law or keep law and order. It's the police that have that constitutional power. But there is nothing wrong in civil society uh, complementing the effort of the police. Uh, there is no successful police system anywhere in the world without contribution by the people. Okay. So your, your effort, your coming up with Odua People's Congress is to assist the police? To complement the effort, the effort of the police. police. We know that, uh, that uh, when uh, the OPC came to be, uh, Nigeria was virtually being taken over by crimes and criminals. And the police were overpowered, they were overstretched, they were underpaid, they had no motivation. And uh, we knew why they, they, they couldn't do the work as much as Nigerian people would expect them to do it. And uh, we couldn't criticize them openly if you criticized them. But case. you had a running battle with them. Because they misunderstood our role. Yeah. They misunderstood our role. They thought, they thought we were coming in to take over their, uh, their, uh, their constitutional role. And we had to persuade them that it was a complementation of their effort. It wasn't to, sub, uh, to subvert their activities. It wasn't meant to, sub, uh, to take over it was not meant to bring them down because we thought social justice was at the lowest end. And everybody was suffering from social injustice, including the police themselves. If they were not suffering from social injustice, why the poor motivation? Why the poor salary? Why the poor conditions of service? These were some of the things we were fighting for, and uh, it was a misunderstanding. And the moment they, uh, they, they, they found uh, a common ground, we started understanding ourselves. It is still, it's, it's true uh, that some members of the OPC, uh, who call themselves members of, members of the OPC, 
still go about flexing muscles in the streets against innocent uh, people, we think it's the role of the police to do that aspect of their work. It's not the role of the ours is to complement their effort in the fight against crime and criminals. Thank you, Jackson. Uh, uh, Mr. Lakwe, um, recently the IG came up with, uh, of course, one of the eight point strategies um, uh, massive onslaught against corruption. And he said corruption has an ugly face. And he went seriously after uh, some men, especially those on roadblocks, um, checkpoints, and on um, police uh, beats. But not much have been done with the state CIDs. For example, um, the Lagos State uh, uh, CID Panty is seen to be highly rotten. Nigerians complain about all your state CIDs. Investigation is virtually going comatose. What is your comment about this? Yes, let me just um, just anti robbery crusade. I mean anti corruption crusade, which is uh, point number five in the eight point program, is still on. It's in the continuum. Um, we started to show showcase the fight of against corruption to Nigerians so that other Nigerians too will learn to fight corruption within their own organizations. So that if we jointly fight corruption, the police, the military, the parastatals and so on in this country, I think it will be a better place. But let me now go straight to the point. Let me assure you that the anti-corruption crusade of Tafa Balubu is still on. It is a continuum. We started with the roadblocks and we had to, the people suffered real attrition because we really went, we went all out and 700 personnel were shown the way out. The problem of the state CID, and we don't want to make it clear now because it is already in our program of action. And it's an ongoing program that will continue until sanity returns to the police force. And we want to use this also as a point of contact to tell other organizations in this country to emulate the Nigerian police because right from inception the police force has been the only self-cleansing organization. No other organization has come to the forefront to fight corruption as Nigeria police is doing. And I want to also call on other chief executives of uh, parastatals, of ministries and extra ministerial departments to showcase the fight against corruption so that one in totality corruption will be a thing of the past. The the Hydra had a problem of corruption in uh, the CID, CIDs of this country, all over, dotted around the police formations, 37 of them, they are going to be faced squarely. So I want to assure you that that is the next phase of action. So he will have here, let him hear. Thank you very much. Doctor, you are seen amongst the middle class, the upper class, and also the downtrodden. Uh, how do they see the police these days, from your own perspective? Uh, well, you see, the police never had a good image in this country. Uh, and this is why they, had, they were not obtaining assistance from the civil society. Uh, the police depend on information from civil society to do their work effectively well. Uh, this was absent. Uh, of recent, of course, like I said earlier, things started changing because you find uh, those who are, the, the who are the hem of affairs now are good managers of men. Uh, they know where to uh, look for help. They know who to speak to. They know what to do. Uh, it's not, not arrest before investigation. I mean, for the first time, the Nigerian police are beginning to investigate before arrest. Uh, this is a good police system. This is what is obtainable in, in civilized countries. But in the past here, uh, at the least suspicion, you would arrest uh, a suspect, uh, a perceived uh, uh, suspect. And he might not have committed the crime for which he's, uh, he, he was being uh, arrested. You would arrest him investigate him. If you later found out that he didn't commit that offense, he even still had to bail himself out, paying some money to the police. But now, with the, uh, with the Nigerian people 
not not condoning uh, corruption. Uh, the, uh, do, do you think people are beginning to fight back when they ask them to pay uh, bribe or they ask them to pay for bail? Do you think they're beginning to fight back because you receive complaints, you you interact with members of the public? Yes, uh, now people spend uh, weeks in detention for not paying. Uh, uh, things we hope will change. Uh, I don't believe that Nigeria has started fighting corruption. If anything, it's corruption that is fighting Nigeria. Nigerians are not fighting corruption yet, but the police have started well doing, looking inwards to do self-cleansing. If other, uh, uh, other organs of the society, like the customs, the immigration, and so on and so forth, look inwards, maybe we'll, we'll have a better society. We'll have a, a bigger fight against corruption. But the government also, or the police, uh, must also uh, look into the civil society for assistance in the fight against corruption. Uh, those who fight against corruption don't necessarily have to be in uniform. Let there be some civilians who are empowered when they see corruption to face it and report to the police. Why, uh, I mean, if you see a policeman uh, taking 20 naira from a driver, why shouldn't somebody be in that bus who will say, this is my ID card? Do you are do doctor, doctor, let me take you up there. The Constitution says every Nigerian has a right to arrest and hand over to police force. In, do you in, need? In a civilized yes. Society, do you need? Do, do you society? need another? Do you need another uh, pass? Another ID card to say to you, this man is corrupt. Is a starting. Get him arrested. Hand him over to the police force. Do you need another identity card we, to do we, that? We do. We do. Uh, I'm not saying every. Not every Nigerian uh, uh, realizes that uh, he or she has the power to arrest an antisocial element. Yeah. Not every Nigerian knows that. As a matter of fact, the moment you see uh, the policeman, it doesn't matter how much crime he is committing, uh, you tend to get frightened and you run away, condoning that evil. But if you have been empowered as a civilian, carrying uh, an identity card signed by the Inspector General of Police that you are empowered to accost somebody who is committing a crime against the society. Uh, I'm not saying everybody in the society should be carrying this, but you could have a hundred, a many thousand of them. People, uh, why are you making use of people? Why are you not making use of people like uh, uh, Professor Shoyinka? If he is going about uh, moving from Lagos to, uh, to Abelkota, and he finds that some policemen uh, extorting money. I, I, I do a lot of traveling, and I see policemen still taking their tw regular 20 naira, never mind uh, what uh, uh, is being done to many of them. Right? But uh, there must be a solution to the root of this problem. So what would be, what do you think in your own opinion should be the solution to the root the problem? So, the solution is social justice. Now, are the police being paid enough? Have they been well motivated? All right, what is their, what is their insurance scheme? How much do they get for losing their lives? All right, uh, in the past, it's only teachers whose reward is in heaven. All right. Now we are beginning to say, uh, police, your reward too is in heaven. But what about the reward of their wives? What about the reward of their children? Is the reward also in heaven? Pay yeah. them quickly and then make sure that if they go outside their pay to execute corruption on the society, they should be handled effectively well.
I know I'm not scheduled to read the news this week, but I just couldn't help coming here to seize this opportunity on behalf of the police newscasting team to congratulate the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Tafa Balogun, on his investiture as Commander of the Federal Republic, CFR, by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. Oh, look at my shoulders. I started off casting news on crime fighters as a DSP, but today I'm a superintendent of police, thanks to the Inspector General. Hope, what do you have to say about this? Oh, quite a lot. Since the Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogun, assumed office, he has positively affected the lives of all policemen. Now we have improved welfare packages, better working conditions, and these unprecedented massive promotions which I have benefited from. Sir, we are proud of you. We are happy to be associated with you. Congratulations. The Inspector General, sir, will wish you the very best. And we sincerely believe that this is the beginning of greater things to come. God bless you, sir. Welcome to Crime Fighters New Studios. I am Hope Mwejo for Okafo. And reading with me is Peter Onche Odaudu. And on behalf of the Crime Fighters News crew, I'd like to wish you hope, a happy birthday, and many happy returns. Thank you very much, Peter. I appreciate. First, the headlines. Welcome back. The Nigeria Police Force says it has concluded investigations into the criminal activities of the trans-border crime kingpin, Hamani Tijani. At a world press conference held recently at the first headquarters Abuja, the Inspector General of Police, Tafa Balogun, says a 204-count charge have been leveled against Hamani Tijani. At the end of our investigation, we have been able to identify a total of 204 counts. So in other words, we are going to prosecute a man with, on a 204 count charge. From offenses of conspiracy to that of murder, to that of armed robbery, to that of receiving stolen property, and to that of Kidnapping. Tafa Balogun went further to give a breakdown of those who lost their lives due to the activities of Hamani Tijani. The total number of victims that had lost their lives in the escapades amounted to 115. Meanwhile, the case came up for hearing at the magistrate's court one, Ishabo in Abiokuta, where Hamani Tijani has been remanded in prison custody till March. 31st, 2004.